In this lesson, I want to explain how you can manipulate powers and roots, since this is a crucial underlying skill you need in algebra, and I've written a couple of examples on the screen. If we take a whole number, say 4, and multiply it by itself by 5 times, we get 1024, but we can also represent this in a shorter form, in this case 4 to the power of 5. In fact, we can take any whole number, represented here by the letter A, and multiply it by itself n times, where A is called the base, and n is the power, or sometimes called the index. So let's try an example. Let's evaluate 3 to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4 is simply 3 multiplied by itself 4 times. If we take the square of 3, or 3 multiplied by 3, we get 9. The square root is the reverse process. But this isn't the end of the calculation. Square roots have two values. Even though the square root of 9 is 3, it's also equal to negative 3. If we multiply negative 3 by itself, we get a positive 9 value. A positive 3 multiplied by itself results in the same positive 9. We can also write square roots in index form. Another example might be the square root of 64, which equals plus and minus 8. So let's go over the six laws of indices. Law 1. When multiplying two or more numbers of the same base, indices are added together. This can be expressed algebraically as a to the power of m multiplied by a to the power of n, which equals a to the power of m plus n. So an example might be 2 squared times 2 cubed times 2. which equals 64, but can also be expressed as 2 to the power of 6. But it's important to note that if the bases are different, indices cannot be added together. For example, these two powers have different bases, and the first law cannot be applied to this expression. But if the indices are equal, you can simplify the expression by multiplying the bases. For example, here the expression is the same as before, but the indices are now the same. If we expand out the powers, and then separate the terms, you can see that this expression can be simplified by multiplying the bases, and keeping the index or the power the same. Law 2. When dividing two numbers having the same base, the index in the denominator is subtracted from the index in the numerator. We can write this algebraically like this. And one example is 2 to the power of 4 divided by 2 squared. If we expand out the powers and cancel like terms, we are left with 2 times 2, or 2 squared. Law 3. When a number, which is raised to a power, is raised to a further power, the indices are multiplied. In other words, a to the power of m, all raised to the power of n, equals a to the power of m times n. We can quickly show this with an example. When you expand out the expression, you can see why the indices are multiplied. Law 4. When a number has an index of 0, its value always equals 1. An example might be 3 to the power of 0, and we can see why this is the case by looking at Law 2. If we divide 3 squared by itself, 
Law 2 states that the indices will cancel out, resulting in 3 to the power of 0. Law 5. A number raised to a negative power is the reciprocal of the number raised to a positive power. And a few examples are listed below. And the last law. When a number is raised to a fractional power, the denominator of the fraction is the root of the number and the numerator is the power. So if we take 8 raised to the fractional power of 2 thirds, Set the 3 or the denominator as the root of 8, then raised to the power of 2 or the numerator. It's important to note that when calculating the value of this expression, you must evaluate the root first before squaring the value. So now I'm going to go over a couple of worked examples using a combination of the six laws. Okay, so let's evaluate 3 times 3 squared divided by 3 to the power of 4. Also notice here that the bases are all the same. First apply law 1 to the numerator, leaving the denominator alone. And then with the resulting fraction, we can apply law 2. This becomes 3 to the power of minus 1, or after using law 5, 1 third. So now we're going to try another similar example, but include the use of law 3. We can apply law 3 to the numerator and law 1 to the denominator. As with the previous example, we can now use law 2 to simplify further. And law 5 to arrive at the final answer. The last example question is a bit more difficult. As we can see with this example, we have two different bases. After grouping similar bases together, we can apply law 2. And because we have a base to the power of a negative index, we can use law 5 we finally end up with a value of 208 and a third.